The commander at the center of this story was Heinz Wilhelm Eck. He was born in Hamburg in northern Germany on March 27, 1916, and subsequently raised in Berlin. Eck joined the German Navy, or Reich Marine, in 1934, enjoying success in a variety of specialty naval training programs and schools. He became a commissioned lieutenant at age 21, and by 1939 was in command of a minesweeper, a role he held until early 1942. Eck transferred to the Navy's legendary U-boat division, where he spent a year being a captain in training aboard U-124. Eck would take command of his own U-boat, U-852, on June 15. The U-boat had just recently been constructed, and Eck was intent on proving why he was so respected within the naval ranks. Eck would finally take his beloved U-852 on its first mission on January 18. It was bound for the German U-boat base at Penang in German-held Malaya in Southeast Asia. It was a notoriously treacherous sea route for U-boats. The fact that U-852 was among the largest and slowest and thus most easily hit U-boats in service only made the journey more jittery for Eck and his crew. The crew was also well aware that all four Type 9D2 U-boats that came before U-852 had been lost. They had all been hit and lost at sea in the South Atlantic or near Ascension Island. The anxiety was no doubt high among all the crew aboard U-852, Commander Eck included. Importantly, the fact that this was such a treacherous route for the U-boat must have played a part in the shocking events that transpired a few weeks later. Eck's operational orders were simple. He was to take U-852 into the Atlantic Ocean to proceed into the Indian Ocean by way of the Cape of Good Hope in South Africa. He was to operate in the Indian Ocean before reaching the U-boat base at Penang. And so, U-852 sailed from the German port of Kiel on January 18, 1944, taking itself around Scotland to then proceed southwards into the North Atlantic. It would take almost two months before the U-boat reached the equator, before that fateful day in March 1944, when the submarine would cross paths with a freighter that was also southward bound. What would transpire would be one of the most shocking events in the annals of modern naval warfare. The SS Peleus was an English-built ship which was Greek-owned and which had been chartered by the British Ministry of War Transport. The crew of 35 men consisted of a variety of nationalities. On board there were 18 Greek sailors, 8 British, 3 Chinese, 2 Egyptians, and a sailor each from Chile, Poland, Russia, and Yemen. What transpired happened on the afternoon of March 13, 1944. Five days earlier, the Greek freighter had left the large port and capital city of Freetown of what was then the British colony of Sierra Leone. It was fully ballasted and making its way to River Plate in Argentina. At the same time, Eck and his crew aboard U-852 were patrolling the waters approximately 500 miles north of Ascension Island, another British territory, and 700 miles south of Freetown. It was at 1700 hours that the U-boat spotted the SS Peleus ahead to its starboard bow. Eck ordered the U-boat to go at full speed in order to come up ahead of the target. The chase between the German submarine and the Greek freighter lasted two and a half hours. It was 1940 and already dark by the time Eck ordered that U-852 surface and prepare for surface attack. The U-boat then fired two torpedoes from the tubes in its bow. The torpedoes slammed into the SS Peleus almost simultaneously, resulting in a massive explosion. Eck, who was on U-852's bridge, would later observe that the detonation was very impressive. Almost immediately, the Greek ship started to sink. It's unlikely that many of its crew survived, given the huge explosion and how quickly it sank, going down almost like a rock, according to witnesses. That explains why none of the men who did survive even had time to put on their life vests. Chief Officer Antonios Leosis and Seaman Dimitrios Constantinides were among the survivors who initially clung on to hatches and other pieces of wreckage. The two men then spotted the ship's life rafts bobbing in the distance and swam toward one. Leosis and Constantinides treaded water as the German submarine glided close by and then clambered on board the raft. The U-boat continued traveling for about a half a mile before it suddenly stopped. It did so because Commander Eck had just made a terrible decision. Every trace of the Peleus, including its surviving crew, had to be destroyed. 
Eck informed the U-boat's crew of his decision and ordered two machine guns be brought up onto the bridge. There were men that protested Eck's decision, including Kolditz and Captain Lieutenant Engineer Lentz. Eck listened to them but simply dismissed their objections. In Eck's mind, all traces of the sinking had to be destroyed so that the U-boat could remain operational and not be under attack by Allied ships and mines. Four officers were left on the bridge of the U-boat as it turned back toward the rafts, including Commander Eck. What happened next is not entirely clear. For example, it was contended that Eck's only order was that the rafts from the Greek freighter had to be sunk. Apparently, he made no mention of shooting at anyone in the water or that any survivors needed to be killed. However, it was patently clear that the survivors would never pull through in the frigid waters of the South Atlantic without the safety of their life rafts. The massacre that ensued was compounded by the fact that it was a very dark and moonless night. The men doing the shooting on U-852's bridge were literally shooting in the dark. Shooting was also intermittent, with periods of total silence. Such was the lack of visibility on that night. The one raft refused to sink. The Germans could not figure out why that was happening. Even so, the submarine glided among the rafts, shooting indiscriminately into them when visibility was better. Worse still, hand grenades were thrown onto rafts and survivors. The result was that nearly all the survivors were killed or died from their wounds. The Further Exploits of U-852 The German submarine under Eck was able to continue along Africa's west coast and down to the Cape of Good Hope in the two and a half weeks after the sinking of the Peleus. However, British anti-submarine warfare forces in stationed in Cape Town, South Africa, were aware of radio traffic from a U-boat that was northwest of Cape Town. In the meantime, U-852 managed to torpedo the SS Debomian, a 5,277-ton freighter, roughly 10 miles to the southwest of Cape Point, South Africa. Fortunately, 49 survivors were rescued by two South African minesweepers the next day. However, that sinking meant the British dispatched a strong anti-submarine warfare group to hunt down the U-boat responsible for the sinking. It was the beginning of the end for U-852, although it would be the SS Peleus that would ultimately be Commander X undoing. Even though the shootings and grenade attacks on the survivors of the Peleus were haphazard, Eck was nevertheless convinced that all the survivors had been killed. That had been his intent anyway. Unfortunately for Eck and his band of war criminals, three men did survive the sinking of the Peleus, namely the two aforementioned Greek sailors, Leosis and Argyros, and a British sailor named Rocco Said. These three men had remained in the water for an incredible 25 days before they were rescued by a passing Portuguese steamship, the SS Alexandra Silva. They were transported back to the port of Lobito in Portuguese Angola. It was then that the British would find out what had happened to the SS Peleus after the men recounted the horrors of March 14, 1944. It would set in motion the eventual demise of Commander Eck and three of his men. At the time, the British had no idea exactly which U-boat had committed the atrocities against the Peleus. However, after the sinking of the SS Debomian off the coast of South Africa, they had a good idea that U-852 may just be the culprit. The pursuit of the U-boat up the eastern coast of Africa took on an even greater urgency for the British. It was on April 30th that the German U-boat was spotted by a Vickers Wellington bomber flying from the port of Aden at the entrance to the Red Sea. The British bomber dropped depth charges into the water, severely damaging the U-boat. Commander Eck knew that all was lost, and so made a dash to beach the submarine on a coral reef off the coast of Somalia. 58 crew of the beached U-852 had survived, but the submarine came under relentless air attacks by six bombers of the British Royal Air Force. The air attacks resulted in seven of the German submarine's crew being killed. Those who survived on the coral reef were captured by the Somaliland Camel Corps and local militia, and dispatched to various British prison camps. Among them was Commander Heinz Wilhelm Eck, Kapitän Leutnant Heinz Eck, Leutnant Sosee August Hoffmann, Marine Stabsarzt Walter Weißpfennig, Kapitän Leutnant Hans Richard Lenz, and Gefreiter Schwender. Those were the names of the five crew of U-852 that were indicted by a British military court in late 1945, mere months after Germany had lost the war. The five men were jointly charged with the following, according to the British court. 
Committing a war crime in that you in the Atlantic Ocean on the night of 1314 the March 1944, when captain and members of the crew of undersea boat 852, which had sunk the steamship Peleus in violation of the laws and usages of war, were concerned in the killing of members of the crew of the said steamship Allied Nationals by firing and throwing grenades at them. The Defense Council argued that Commander Eck had ordered the destruction of the life rafts as an act of self-defense. It was argued that Eck genuinely believed the rafts were a danger to him. He had further ordered the throwing of hand grenades since machine gun fire was not sinking the rafts. It was further presented as evidence for the five men that the German U-Boat Command had issued strict instructions to all submarines as follows. No attempt of any kind should be made at rescuing members of ships sunk, and this includes picking up persons in the water and putting them in lifeboats, riding capsized lifeboats, and handing over food and water. Rescue runs counter to the rudimentary demands of warfare for the destruction of enemy ships and crews. The British military court was not convinced by those arguments. Heinz Wilhelm Eck was sentenced to death, as were Lieutenant Hoffmann and Walter Weissfennig. Captain Lieutenant Lentz received a life sentence, even though he had argued with Eck not to attack the life rafts. Schwender was sentenced to 15 years imprisonment. Eck, Hoffmann, and Weissfennig were executed by firing squad on November 30, 1945. Heinz Wilhelm Eck was 39 years of age. The aforementioned German directive to all submarines had ended with these damning words. Be harsh, having in mind that the enemy takes no regard of women and children in his bombing attacks of German cities. Of course, nothing can excuse what Eck and his U-852 crew did that day to the survivors of the Peleus. Yet those words by that German directive do lay bare just how morally ambiguous the choices are for all those who engage in warfare.